Okay, so we're here with uh, Tom Tando from uh, Bolland in Western Queensland. Tom, just give us a little bit of uh, info on your, your, your business and how you found the, uh, the horse habitat. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we've, we're pretty new to the cropping um, cropping game where we are. Um, so we're probably 18-inch uh, rainfall, sort of a, yeah, a loamy red country, uh, predominantly buffalo grass, grazing's our main... Uh, yeah, our main main game, um, and then yeah, we uh, we sort of thought, saw a, a bit of an opening. Also, my background's farming um, and contract farming, and uh, so I've had a bit to do with with disc machines. Um, yeah, and we uh, we sort of thought we might, you know, given the last sort of two years, <laughs> sort of you know, anything's possible, I guess. So we sort of thought, you know, let's let's diversify. And uh, yeah, so we headed down the cropping path, and our main game was uh, was was moisture conservation. So, with the machine, uh, Tom, how have you how have you been using? You've just been mainly direct drilling, or you've been in cultivation, and you use variable rate. Yeah, yep. So we're we're direct drilling. Um, so in our in our situation, um, it's new country, bit of timber in it. Uh, we really like the the setup with the the rubber block design. It's been around for a long time, but I think horse has, has got it right. Um, I've seen it used on a lot of different other implements and probably st steered away from it in the past. Um, just basically on, you know, um, yeah, it, it, this particular design with the, the down pressure um, working independently to the actual torsion rubbers uh, works really, really well. Very simple, uh, low maintenance. Um, but yeah, in our application where we're direct drilling into stub by stubble, and we've got some we've got some some timber in our country being new country you're never going to get it perfect yeah. the first season and it's also quite undulating it's still settling out and having the individual units doing their own thing the depth control is just just really nice so we don't have the wide wide um, depth wheels we've only got a narrow i think that might be a 50 mil yeah. 50 mil unit and that carries you know we're, we're soft red country carries a unit no dramas at all um no and no, i found it found it very very good and and you can just see, you know, if you're within, you know, half a day, you can see every seed's coming up together. So uniform, the maturity of their crops, you know, identical right across it. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's a big thing. We, we sort of, um, you know, there's a lot of information now in this disc space. And, and there's a lot of, you know, yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of reasons you, you, you would go with a disc over a, a, a tiny unit. And, and especially in our, in our area where we, we want to maintain all that moisture um you know then that's our big difference between where where um you know us farming as opposed to um you know some of our neighbors you know they're all conventional and not not so much you know i suppose now we're talking conventional it used to be it used to be a full cultivation when you plant now conventional sort of seems to be time machines as opposed to disc machines but now nah, we've been really really impressed with the finish um very very little disturbance um and we we've gone with a tooth wheel on the back um and we're actually finding we can dig dirt out of the furrow if we don't want the seed to be in too deep we can um offset it to the to the plant line and um and fold that uh, that furrow closed um and yeah no we're we're finding them very very reliable very very um accurate seed placement and you'd probably yeah not having diffusers, we thought that initially that would be uh, be an issue as far as setting your fan speed, but haven't had any issues at all. And it, it's quite amazing what you can get away with. Uh, the simplicity of it is, uh, yeah, very, very easy to set up. Your depth, um, your press closing wheel, and then your, your press wheel, it's, no, no, very, very good. So from a maintenance point of view, have you, you're disappointed not to have worn out of the grease gun? With <laughs> no, no, I think, yeah, the evolution of, uh, of of battery powered grease guns you know you, we always thought that 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 would fix our our, uh, our greasing issues but uh yeah you soon get sick of them but no no very very good yeah we haven't i suppose so we've probably done um uh yeah two and a half thousand hectares with our machine now um and i think the only yeah the only grease greasing points we keep an eye on is in the in the parallelogram behind the machine and um you know yeah, no, it's 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 very very good and and, and simple. Like there's no, um, you know, if you if you get too close to a fence or if you get you know into a sticky spot, you know, whether it's you're driving a wet melon hole or something, lift up, back out. You're not, um, yeah, you're not getting out unhooking anything or um, 
no, no, very good. What sort of speed are you running at? Uh, so we we sort of try and sit between that 11 to 12 car an hour, um, just depending on yeah what sort of conditions we're going to. We did find um, so the the down pressure for your units are set through the screen on the go, so you can set your sort of benchmark where you want the machine to to start at. Um, and we did actually find we went from barley stubble to wheat stubble. Um, and we found that we actually had to back our unit pressure off uh, because we were getting some of the wheat stubble pulling out. It doesn't sort of hang into the ground like barley stubble would. Yeah. Um, and that was the only thing that, and it was so simple to fix on the go. You sort of, yeah, you don't really know. We didn't really know what the problem was, but yeah, it was all to do with our down pressure. And that's the only thing that we've, we've sort of scratched our head and you know, it was a, such a simple thing. Um, but no, no, I've been... Like we're checking row units, being able to lift them up chest height to, to have a look at the row units. Oh, yeah, like, I mean, we do a, we do a seed check. Uh, well, we do an airflow check, so we've got, we've got these blockage monitors. Um, very sensitive. So any little issue you've got with... We actually have, we've been in some really wet conditions where we've actually lifted this, this little rubber wheel up and, and pinned him up. Um, and then just using this as a straight press wheel, so like a, a, a tine machine would be. Yeah. Um, you know, we, so we've been in some really, really wet conditions. Um, and to check your seed boots, as simple as, as lifting it up, walk along with your hand underneath it, and, and there's no issues at all. It's very, um, yeah, very user friendly. And, you know, as far as, as um, you know, there's nothing worse than having a blocked unit or a blocked row or an, an in a year like this. It'll always be on the road. That's right, yeah, yeah. So, no, as far as user friendly and, yeah, and, and getting a, um, you know, the ease of getting a good finished job is, yeah. yeah. Transport, like moving around, being able to fold up to three metres. Yeah, excellent, excellent. No, no, it's um, very straightforward and it, and it, yeah, you think you think, gosh, it's going to, um, you know, it's a bit, looks a bit, you know, um, it's very an un unconventional machine to be folding up like a bit like a spray rig, single axle. Uh, but no, you soon get get um, get used to that, and it's a good thing. I mean, we didn't even run a, a truck or grouper this year; it was too wet to get down the paddock with it. So we were folding up and and trafficking back to the silos, um, doing all our inoculating and loading back there, and um, just yeah, very simple. You know, once you fold it up, that there's nothing on the ground except your wheels. You know, your transport wheels, keep an eye on them and, and you know, it's like you're wiping out a grid you know, back behind you or something. Um, so as far as, as, you know, operators go, very simple to get someone set up and started on it. Yeah, right, right, so it's set up very similar to our machine. Uh, so the difference is we're on 10 inch. This is also running uh, the half width shut off. So we're using that as well, uh, integrated with, with Greenstar actually. Um, so we used half with shut off and variable rate this year on our fertiliser. So we were going anywhere from um, 25 to 50 kilos on the starter. Um, and then also using, you know, we've got a few point runs and those sorts of things. And yeah, starter at $1,500 a tonne. <laughs> you want to be sort of saving a bit. Yeah. So no, it works very, very well. Very simple. Um, and look, if you decide to put it on a later date, um, you, know, you can do, you know. I mean, I know Wows didn't turn up with it and very easy to install. It's all there ready to go. Um, no, no, it works, works really well. The cool ice bus, uh, you know, where you can use it as an ice bus machine or it's got its own screen, that's, that's, right. that's pretty pretty good feature too. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. No, it's um, very neat, very tidy. You know, in the cab, there's, you know, we use two remotes. Um, so one's sort of your straight up and down, one's fan, and yeah, no, you'd think um, with all the different functions on the machine, you'd think, gosh, I'm going to need five remotes, you know, and they're all going to be used, but no, no, it works very well through the screen, very so simple. You can see you've got one hydraulic line, in and out, lift and raise, and that, you hit the button to fold it, and there's... That's, that's right, right. there's a hydraulic, yeah. yeah. You've got your fan, and then your coast drain. Yep, yep, and it's, and it's very, you know, very safe, like as far as folding up, you can't go and twist this thing into a knot, um, because you've accidentally, you know, used the wrong remote. Sure. Um, you know, it's, it, it steps you through on the screen and, uh, no, it works very well. Three metre, three, three metre in, infield, that's, that's uh, a good Yeah, three metre works well. So it's, it's on the sliding, um, the telescopic axle. Um, so down the track, we uh, we probably would like to have it as a fixed three metre centres and actually use that telescopic function as a road tracker. Oh. 
yeah. so we can enter rows, so we can control where we want the machine to sit. And and it and it sounds like there's a lot of um, you know there's a lot of the machine being so simple, um, you know, there's a lot of space for for those little things that you know I think down the track will um, yeah we'll be able to expand on on the machine we've already bought. Did you get the third bin? Third we didn't. Um, so the third bin's a great feature. I mean we're we're doing a multi-species yeah. uh, crop ourselves, and yeah we uh, we probably. Uh, Moving forward, we'll probably go to a three bin. I think these are now coming in as a three bin. Yeah. Um, that'll be a great, a great feature, great function, um, and having that ability to do three products, whether it be two fertilisers and a seed, or two seeds and a fertiliser. No, yeah. it'll, um, it'll be a big thing. But this year, when it's been so muddy, like you've got 11,500 kilos, two ton over the yep. on the drawbar, and a nine and a half ton there. It's and when it's in the field working, like a lot of that weight is taken from like on the gauges as well. That's so right. It's uh, it, it does tread lightly. It does. You would think that um, you know when you fold it up, heading down the paddock, you think, gee whiz, I've got a fair lump of a machine sitting on a single axle. But once you're in the ground and working, it's amazing how much weight's actually taken by those depth wheels um, and the whole machine machine sits up you know and it works and you know when the machine's in and out of the ground it um, no it, it does work very well and having the ability to lift the machine out of the ground but keep your seed running if you're going through a wet spot um, so it'll drop all the all the pressure out of your units and uh, they'll just you know they'll just sit on top of the ground unless you've actually got to lift it up um, you know you can yeah no it's, it's a great feature being able to drop all your unit pressure off to get through that wet spot, load her up again once you get out the other side and, yeah. and, and plan away. That's great. Yeah, very straightforward. Once you, you know, you get it pretty close the first first calibration, um, the second one's usually a little, you, you're dealing with, you know, 0 0.002 of a kilo by the end of it. It's very, very accurate. I mean, we, we plant a canola this year. Um, they have actually a little brush here that bolts on the inside of the metering unit, lines up with the little, um, the little grooves in your canola roller. Um, and I know that yeah, canola can be a bit of a fickle product to get the right rate, but we were doing 2.2 .2 kilos, and I think we were, yeah, over 100 hectares, we were half a kilo out. Like it's just amazingly accurate. Um, and we're also running two products, so we had canola in one bin, peas in the other, um, and the airflow didn't seem to affect affect anything. It, it, it worked really, really well. Um, yeah, and and. As you say, can run up to 120 RPM. We just like to try and sit around that 80 if we can. Um, and there's a roller out there to, to get you by. You can run one bin, two bins, whatever you like, um, all through the screen. So with the, um, you were saying you're commenting there about the even germination across across from left to right. Do you think, like with Horsch, what they try to do is they have the fan, or in most cases with all their SCs, they have the fan. They meter it once and they split it once. The coefficient of variation should be around about five percent. Yeah. Is that what you would see in the field? Yeah, it's, it's always a trigger. Like we um, we've had trailing air carts before, um, and and not always you know the same brand machines. You know, so it might be a you know uh, one brand of air cart, one different brand of of, uh, of planter, and and you always have that thing in your head. Oh, should they be exactly the same length of hose to try and keep our air pressures all the same? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we found that yeah, it's it's bang on. You know, it's uh, it's very very accurate, and and having it that simple, like you see a lot of primary splitters, secondary splitters, and then diffusers. Yes. Um, and all the way through, there's probably, you know, yeah, you're sort of, yeah, you're dealing with, you know, trying to get, or you're trying to get it as accurate as you can, but we haven't seen an issue at all with, um, yeah, with number of plants per metre, um, you know, across the machine, very, very accurate.